Well, I have to say it was bittersweet leaving beautiful Nevada City yesterday and having access to my friend's home for two weeks. What a pleasure. Spent the night last night up in the Redwoods and this morning I'm down here on the coast at Fort Bragg and we'll be heading slightly north up to visit a peculiar type of redwood that is referred to as a candelabra redwood. So let's get underway and go check those out. Just look at that color. I'm taking a brief break en route to go and see the Candelabra Redwoods and I've just stopped here at this winery that is sitting right here on the coast and um, what a splash of color right here. Amazing, amazing place. Can you tell me a little bit about these uh, five wines I'm going to be tasting? Well, this one right here is the wine. It's my fault. It's a blend of Pinot Grigio, Pinot Blanc, and Chandon Blanc. And it's named It's My Fault because you're on a fault, named after us, the Pacific Star Fault. Fantastic. Thank and then every time you come up, I'll tell you a little fact about each of the other wines. Sure. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. I'm heading up for my second glass of wine, and I'm going to ask Sally if she'd tell us a little bit more about the winery as she is the owner. Yes. Hi, Sally. Hi. Hi. What would you like to know? You asked me a question. I'll well, have an I would like to know where your grapes are from. Obviously, you're not growing right here on the no, premises. No, grapes don't grow on the coast. It's too cold, yep. which is why we all live here. Um, it, my grapes come from Calpella Redwood Valley, which is inland, the, Uchi the upper part of the Ukiah Valley. And most of my grape growers are of Italian descent. They came here pre-prohibition, so some of them are fourth and fifth generation and grape growers, and they're really good at it. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm going to put some Dad's Daily Red in your glass. Thank you. Their wine is very good. Sally, the owner, uh, spent quite a bit of time talking with me at length about the place and how this sits on a fault line. The San Andreas Fault itself, the big one, sits about 12 miles off the coast and parallels the coast. Sally got into the winemaking business as a 21-year-old and apprentice to a winemaker who had said at the time there aren't enough women in the business. So she ended up uh, learning the trade from scratch and happened to come across this piece of property 35 years ago and has been making wine here ever since. And boy, what an amazing piece of property. Couldn't have picked a nicer location. Serious, so gorgeous. So this is the Sea Red, a blend of Zinfandel, Barbera, Charbonneau, and Petite Syrah. And it's got the Charbonneau in it, which is a very rare grape. Only 92 acres left in the whole world. Oh my. And that's what Sally's known for, is rare, unique, and exotic wines. And she's been crowned by the LA Times as the queen of Charbonneau. She has a crown in everything. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Joni is a very colorful character and her playful spirit is clearly captured here in her artwork. Not a bad beginning for someone who has only been painting for two months. After that delightful distraction at Pacific Star Winery, it is a six-mile one-way trip off Highway 1 to the Candelabra Redwoods, crossing over a steep and winding dirt road formerly used by loggers which affords spectacular panoramas of the southernmost aspect of the Lost Coast and terminates at the secluded Usal Beach. The rugged terrain and exposure to the full force of Pacific weather and salty sea spray is what has shaped these unique trees over time. Unlike their majestic upright brothers and sisters, the trunks of these peculiar redwoods branch out not far from the ground, sprouting multiple leaders that reach for the sky.
Yet another simply glorious day here in Northern California, up in Redwood country. And I can't think of a better time or place than to go to church. Well, welcome to my church. These magnificent trees that surround me are part of the greater redwood forest up here in Northern California. This happens to be one of the really highly protected areas that has never been cut before. So this is ancient old growth forest and what a remarkable, magnificent place this is. So quiet here. Time for contemplation, reflection, and just simply admiring the incredible beauty. And watch you don't strain your neck looking up. It's a long way up there. These trees are two, three hundred feet tall. I must say, it's just magical being back here amidst the redwoods. And thanks to Sally over at Pacific Star Winery yesterday, who gave me this recommendation. And it's certainly a spectacular grove. This past winter, like so many other places in California, saw a lot of damage. Sad to see big trees like this having been uprooted and just toppled over. Well, money can destroy and money can also save. And it's thanks to the Rockefellers with their power and influence and far-sightedness to see the beauty in this place and to recognize that these lands should be set aside indefinitely for everybody to enjoy. Ah, just to give you a sense of scale, I must say it's amazing to be in a forest where there is no sign of deforestation in any way, shape, or form. The only cuts you will see are along the trails here where the Park Service has cleared the logs that have fallen across the trail. And though this particular tree may well have been a victim of fire, generally the redwoods here are fairly fire tolerant and have tannins in their bark that are natural fire retardants. And their bark alone can grow up to 12 inches thick. So they have great protection. And that's why they still stand after thousands of years. So this is my church. I highly recommend you pay a visit at some point. Put it on your bucket list. Just had to do a quick river crossing. And now I'm going to be taking the Southern Trail back through the Redwood Groves and returning to the van. From there, I'll be heading up into the mountains to a part of California that is referred to as the Lost Coast. There's a small town up there called Ferndale that I have been told houses a rather interesting collection of kinetic sculptures. So we have that to look forward to. This evening, I may well find myself down on the Pacific coast, just close to a small town called Trinidad. I have been given the use of a piece of property up there for a few days by a friend of mine. And I'm very much looking forward to this because I am told the views from there are unparalleled. 
we got that to look forward to. For now though, come on, let's get back into the redwoods and get this journey underway. The Lost Coast, for me, was very reminiscent of parts of the west coast of Scotland, and I simply couldn't pass through here without spending a little time walking the beaches and making it home for the night. And let me tell you, it's like stepping back in time. And I can't believe such a beautifully pristine place has not been developed like every other aspect of the California coast. But it's so nice to see this in such a rugged, pristine condition. As it turned out, those kinetic sculptures I referred to earlier were part of an amphibious race which is run each year on Memorial Day, starting in Arcata and finishing in Ferndale. And so it happened just as I was walking the beaches of the Lost Coast. A day late and an unfortunate timing, you might say. But nonetheless, I enjoyed a stroll down the delightful downtown area with interesting shops, galleries and restaurants en route to the Trinidad area. So I got to give a big shout out to this place in Arcata, Northern California. It's the Finnish country sauna and tubs. And I've just experienced a delightful little hot tub in here that is well worth sharing with you all. So as you step through the coffee shop, you enter this delightful little garden setting. And around the peripheral edges of the garden are a series of small huts, each one containing a private tub. And you have the option of either a half hour or an hour soak. So I just wanted to quickly take you into this one particular tub I soaked in for the last half hour. So here we are. Haha! <laughs> and this lovely young lady is just doing the cleaning of it right now and making sure it's righteous for the next person. But there we are. It's a beautiful little cedar hot tub in an idyllic little private setting, complete with its own shower and changing room. One of those special little gems that you only really get to hear about if you're either local or you know somebody who's been here formerly. Really glad I stopped off here. So if you ever find yourself in Arcata, right on the coast, this is a place to make a stop. This is the driveway to my friend Ray's place, right here on the beach or overlooking the ocean, just south of Trinidad. What a spectacular place back here. He had said it was pretty magical. So I'm expecting great things. We are right here on the beach, folks. Look at this. Well, I must say, the view from where I'm gonna get to spend the next few days is simply astounding. This is everything and more than I had expected. Around the other side of the bay is the little town of Trinidad, and beyond there is a series of state parks and really tremendous hikes. And so my little van sits down there, and I'm standing on this knoll that just overlooks the beach beyond, and the surf. This little gem is known as Fern Canyon. And what a spectacular little valley this is. Seven different types of ferns 
that inhabit this canyon. Fern Canyon is by reservation and they only permit 50 permits per day and I think it's more of a parking issue than anything but just be forewarned that if you want to come visit this place you need to get online the day before and secure a permit or show up like myself at five in the afternoon and have a little bit of good luck on your side good morning everybody and welcome to northern california and the smith river i'm on the south fork of the smith river this morning and this is a wild and scenic river and the smith river watershed is one of the most pristine river systems in the whole of the country it is absolutely beautiful water is crystal clear and today we've got some good flow um, this is a stellar river if you're a kayaker of any description it ranges from class 2 all the way up to class 6 in the upper reaches it is a world-class river and I'm really excited about this morning's paddle um, I've got five miles to go and um, water is chilly so we definitely don't want any have any mishaps anyway let's get underway Rainfall is the dominant source of the Smith River's annual flow, and on this particular day it was considered low, which will give you an idea of what a big river this can become. So it is a serious undertaking, and one I'm especially cognizant of as a solo boater. The Smith is unique among many big western rivers in that it runs freely along its entire course without any dams and has 315 miles designated as wild and scenic, more than any other in the country. That is cold water. 